control, and we still lift up praise and worship to you this morning, God, and we just focus our hearts on you right now. Um, we love you, and we lift up these songs to you in Jesus' name. Amen. I was buried beneath my shame And who could carry that kind of weight It was my tomb Till I met you And I was breathing but not a lie and all my failures I tried to hide it was my tomb till I met you then he called my name you called my name and I ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day oh you call my name and i ran out of that grave out of the darkness into your glorious day And now your mercy has saved my soul. And now your freedom is all that I know. The old man knew Jesus when I met you and you called my name. You call my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious day Oh, you call my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness into your glorious day. All right, let's lift this up. I needed rescue. I needed rescue. My sin was heavy, but chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter. I was an orphan, but you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future. My eyes are open. Cause when you called my name, shout it out. I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glory I stay. Oh, you call my name and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness into your glory I stay. Amen. And I searched the world, but it couldn't fill me. And man's empty praise. And treasures that fade are never enough. Then you came along and you put me back together. And now every desire is now satisfied. 
here in your love. Let's lift our voices this morning. Oh, there's nothing better than you. No, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, and I'm not afraid to show you my weakness and my failures and flaws. Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend. Cause the God of the mountain is the God of the valley. Oh, and there's not a place where your mercy and grace won't find me again. No, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing, God, better than you. Lord, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Sing that again. There's nothing. Oh, there's nothing better than you. No, there's nothing better than you. Lord, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. He turns our morning into dancing. You turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn morning to dancing. You turn beauty for ashes, and you turn shame into glory. Sing it. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. Oh, there's nothing better than you. No, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing better than you. No, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. You turn graves into gardens. You turn craves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You turn craves. You turn craves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. He's the only one. You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. Let's give him some praise this morning.
chose this next song because I think it's important that as we start this new year that we are declaring victory over our lives, over our country, over our church. The victory that's been promised to us. That we just sing that over our lives this morning. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. And when the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Because the God I serve knows only how to triumph. And my God will never fail. Sing that again. Oh, my God will never fail. And I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you. Lord, and I'm going to see a victory, I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. There's power in his name, and there's power in the mighty name of Jesus. In every war he wages, he will win. When I'm not backing down from any giant, because I know how this story ends. Yeah. Oh, I know how this story ends. And I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord, yes. I'm going to see a victory, I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see, I'm going to see a victory, I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Oh, I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. We sing, we believe. You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for my good. You turn it for good. You take, oh, oh, oh. you take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good, you turn it for good, yeah. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good, God. You turn it for good, and now I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs. Don't get quiet or get louder. We got to shout this out. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. Oh, I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. He takes. You take what the enemy meant for evil. And you turn it for good. 
you turn it for good. Oh, God, you're turning it around. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. You take. You take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. God, you turn it for good. Oh, we believe you take what the enemy meant for evil, and you turn it for good. Oh, you turn it. Let's declare victory over our lives right now. I'm going to see a victory. I'm going to see a victory. For the battle belongs to you. I'm going to see a victory, I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you. One last time, oh, I'm going to see a victory, I'm going to see a victory, for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Father, this morning, 2020 seemed to be like a grave. It seemed to be so difficult. But Lord, we're here together in your house, in this house, to, declaim, to, to declare 2021 to be a year of victory. The Lord, you're going to see us through these difficulties. You're going to see us through election chaos. You're going to see us through financial challenge. Lord, you're going to see us through personal challenge. Father, I pray right now for everyone in this room. Lord, maybe they've carried weights and burdens and trouble into their lives and into this room today. Lord, and we just are here to pronounce that there's going to be victory in their lives in this new year. And Lord, we just speak it in this room today. And we declare it in your house this morning. We just thank you for your goodness to us, Lord. We thank you for your goodness to us. And we give you praise. And we thank you today. Lord, we just pray right now, Lord, for this election that's coming up in Tuesday in Georgia. Lord, I pray that God, that Lord, you would have your way, that Lord, you'd protect our country. Lord, millions of Christians around the world are play, praying right now. That Lord, I pray that uh, Lord, the, the, the House or the Senate could be controlled in the right way and be kept in the hands that it is. And, and Lord, I just pray that God right now that your hand would be upon that uh, election, keep it with integrity. Lord, I pray for our senators that they try to certify this election. I pray that those that will be contested in the right way, where there's been fraud, it'll be exposed, and God, your, your will would be declared uh, in our country. And I pray that God, we just intercede together as your people, that God, your will would be accomplished for your goodness and you'd protect our entire country. In your name we ask it. Give us your victory. In your name we pray. And everybody said a great, great big? Amen. 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 Lord bless you. You may be seated. Well, it's good to see you in the house of the Lord. It looks like in here, like our pandemic is over. And it's good to see you here together worshiping the Lord. And I want to welcome everybody that's online watching this morning. And we want to welcome you, those that are watching right now, live streaming, or watch it a little bit later today or this week. Uh, we want to welcome you uh, as well. Uh, if you're a guest this morning, there's a little guest card in the chair in front of you. If you'll just drop that, fill that out, drop that in the offering in a little bit so we can have a record of your visit. And we'd like to pray for those who, are, who come and that are guests. And if you're online watching, it's your first time at the beginning of this new year, uh, you can go to our website, crosspointgb.com. And on there, uh, you can uh, go to the contact page, drop us an email, let us know you're listening and you're a part of the service and part of the ministry here. Uh, we're so glad to have you with us today. We believe in prayer around here, and uh, if there's prayer cards back at the prayer wall back there, if you have a prayer request, fill that out, and you can place that in that prayer box. We'll pray for those during the week. You're online listening, go to the ministries tab, and, and there's a, a, under that tab, there's a drop down that says prayer request. You can fill that out and uh, submit that, and we will pray for those. We get those almost immediately, and uh, how many believe that God wants to answer prayer this year like never before? I believe that he does, and that he is going to do that uh, in our lives. 
Um, <clears throat> the kids are going to be in with us this morning. Um, uh, Brent and Bobby are coming back from Hawaii. Those poor souls, they had to suffer in Hawaii for a couple of weeks. And uh, they'll be back and back doing kids uh, next Sunday morning. So we'll have a great morning uh, next Sunday morning with them. Um, I want to just welcome some, some special guests uh, this morning. Uh, Pastor Chris's parents are here, Terry and Debbie, from S Pastor Arnie's favorite place in the world, Salt Lake City, Utah. And uh, we want to welcome you guys. We love your son. You raised a great son and his family, grandkids, and daughter-in-law back there. She's pretty good, too. Uh, Ashley, she is. So we love you guys. Love uh, Pastor Chris. And uh, what he means to us. So but welcome. Glad to have you with us. And we envy that weather out there a little bit. And I was telling him just before the pandemic, we, Pastor Arnie and I were out there skiing together and had a great time. So uh, anyway, uh, well, just a few things. Well, uh, we just, if you want to prepare your morning tithes and offering, why don't you go ahead and do that right now? Uh, thank you for your faithfulness and giving to the Lord. And uh, this is the first Sunday of the new year. Let's just start off with a giving of our tithes, our missions giving. And uh, God has helped us, been faithful to us uh, through the last year. And I know I wrote my check, uh, my tithe check out for this very first Sunday of the new year. I pray that you will do the same. And uh, God is helping us with that. The ways to give, you can see there. I don't need to reiterate. You can read uh, yourself. Those online, you can uh, read there. Uh, so thank you for your faithfulness uh, in giving to the Lord uh, in, in, in every week. Uh, just a few things before, while you're preparing your giving. Um, these points that is the... Uh, Christmas decorations, we left them up one more Sunday. I told our decorating crew, I said, you can, it's up to you. Take them down this week or, or leave them up one more. They chose to leave them up. So these are going to come down. And I wanted to say, uh, these poinsettias here, aren't they beautiful? Aren't they just gorgeous? Uh, they're for giveaway today. So first come, first serve. If you want to take one home with you, uh, just come and take it until they're gone. Uh, and uh, just take it home and enjoy it uh, because uh, otherwise it'll be thrown away. We don't want that to happen. So uh, there it is. Um, I'm just going to let you guys know that uh, next Sunday it'll be kind of a little barren here. And then the, uh, next Sunday afternoon they're starting a redesign of the platform. And so you're going to see that happening. I'm trying to let you know ahead of time. So you won't come into church in a couple Sundays and say, uh, did I come to the wrong church this morning? No, you'll be in the right church. It'll just look a little better out here, a little more classy and a little more cool, a little cooler than I am. But uh, it'll, be, uh, it'll be there, so... Uh, men's breakfast is coming up uh, this coming Saturday uh, from 8 to 9 a.m. Guys, join us uh, for Food and Fellowship. There's a sign-up out there. Guys, let's just make this a part. It's once a month. Come together. Just good egg bake, oatmeal, uh, great time together, and we just have a little time of sharing. So, guys, just make it a priority in this year and uh, be a part of that. We do that once a month. Usually on the first Sunday of the Saturday of the month, it's going to be the second this week. Uh, this month uh, and be a part of that. Ladies Bible study, January 20th, uh, Living Beyond Yourself. My wife is leading that. That's actually at our home. And ladies, you can just be a part of that. Love to have you at our home and enjoy that fellowship and time together. Okay, ushers, why don't you come forward and wait upon us for our morning tithes and offering. And um, I wonder, is there coming? Uh, Dick Warnke, who coordinates all that, he said to me before church, Pastor, we could use a few more greeters and ushers. So if you have a desire to serve in our usher greeter team, uh, would you let Dick know? D Dick's standing in the back door. Raise your hand. Just go see him, okay? He's the guy that does that. He's one of our elders. So thank you, Dick, for all that you do. And if you have a desire to serve, and uh, we'll talk this morning about serving in different ways. So uh, if you uh, can serve in that way just once a month, just be a part of serving and being a blessing to people. Ah. Uh, Chad Larson, please, Lord, in prayer for the offering. Amen. The Lord bless you as you give. Well, this morning I'm going to begin a new series um, that you know, I've entitled Blessed to be a Blessing. And so it's going to go for four or five weeks, uh, maybe six, we'll see. I started off the last one, it was going to go four or five weeks, ended ten weeks, so, uh, but I think it's going to stay in that range, uh, and so we're going to begin that. If you want to turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 12 this morning, Genesis chapter 12, and, and uh, I'll get there in just a moment. And um, I want to just kind of plant a seed in our lives as we begin to talk about this subject. I, I think that out of coming out of this pandemic, there is a, a stirring in our hearts, I want to say, 
that it's a, a stirring that, that we have been alone long enough. We have been isolated long enough. How many of you are sick of sickness? We're sick of talking about sickness. And uh, how many of you are tired of the six feet rule? You know, just keep people like this a long ways away. So I want to spend, I, I think that's in all of our hearts. And how do we turn this? And I ask the Holy Spirit just to help us to say, how do we turn this into a new year that God wants to do something special in and through our lives this morning? So let's, um, I, I, I just, I think the Holy Spirit wants to just answer that stirring that's in all of our hearts today. And so let's look at our text, uh, Genesis chapter 12, and I'm going to look at the first eight verses and then we'll pray for the message today. And Genesis chapter 12, and it's actually the same text I started our last series with. And so uh, let's look at verse 1, Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord had said to Abram, get out of your country, from your family and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. And I will make you a great nation, and I will bless you. I'll make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I'll bless those who bless you, and I'll curse him who curses you. And in all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram departed as the Lord had spoken to him, and Lot went with him. And Abram was 75 years old when he departed from Haran. Then Abram took Sarah, his wife, and Lot's brother's son, and all their possessions, and they had gathered, uh, and the people whom they had acquired... Uh, and the pe- people, the possessions they'd acquired uh, in Haran, and they departed to go to the land of Canaan. So they came to the land of Canaan. Abram passed through the land to the place of Shechem, as far as the Terebinth tree of Morah, and the Canaanites were there in the land. Then the Lord appeared to Abram and said, To your descendants I will give you this land. And there he built an altar to the Lord who had appeared to him. And he moved from there to the mountain east of Bethel, and he pitched his tent with with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. And there he built an altar to the Lord, and he called on the name of the Lord. So I begin this message this morning. I don't want this to be just a sermon or just a message. It's my heart prayer that will make this an altar this room an altar today those of you online that you'll make your living room your house your kitchen wherever you're an altar to the lord and these couple of declarations that we're gonna, that we find here will become a part of our spirit into this new year father today i pray as we open your word i pray your word would speak to our lives and give us a new direction into this new year that would focus our heart, our mind, and our spirit in the way that is pleasing to you. We make this an altar to you this morning, Father. In your name we pray. Amen. I'm amazed as I read Jesus' ministry and look at his life as he touched people. He had a way of just simply going to people where they were, whether they were on the street or in their house, and he touched their life where they were at. It was that simple essence that he touched so many people that were around him. I, I think of some that he touched. There was a man who had a bad spirit. There was a mother-in-law who was sick with a high fever. There was a man who was weak with a crippled hand. There was a son who was sick. He was ready to die. And One gripped me in particular in Luke chapter 7 and a a dead man is carried to Jesus but it was the words that followed that that grabbed my heart a dead man was being carried out and it said the only son of his mother and she was a widow a dead man the only son of his mother And she was a widow. And there Jesus touched her and touched him. As we begin to think about this new year, I believe out of this thing where we've been, this year has been filled with self and all by ourselves, 
that God wants to turn our attention like he did Jesus to touch those around our lives. Do you relate to any of these needs? Maybe your need is different. I want you to know that Jesus is here to touch your need wherever it might be, whatever your situation is, whatever's going on in your family, your life. He wants to touch those online that are watching whatever situations in your family, your life that you're dealing with. You could say it this way, Jesus just simply went around blessing other people. I think in our lives, we all want our lives to count. I don't, I don't care what age you are. We want our lives to make a difference. There, there's a cry. There's something in our hearts that we're built that way. We were made that way with God. We want our lives to be a blessing to others. You might say, Pastor, where did that start? I'm here to tell you that it started right here in our text with Abram. It started right where we're studying this morning. Because he said here in this verse, chapter 12, verse 2, look at this, I have it up on your screen for you, part of this verse. I will bless you, and you will be a blessing. I will bless you, and you will be a blessing. That desire in you to make your life count... For your life to be a difference to somebody else, it started right here in the beginning of the Bible, in the book of Genesis, in our text. That's the desire that's in you. So what could we learn? What's God saying to us this morning, and what could we learn from this text? And I I basically have two things that I feel that the Lord wants to speak to us today, and let me start with the first one. First of all, you need to receive and stand in God's blessing for you. Number one, just receive and and stand in God's blessing. Now, the nature of God is to bless. you got to understand that about God. The nature of God. Now, let's be the beginning, Adam and Eve, right? It says he created Adam and Eve, and what did he do? He blessed them. You say, why is it in you that you want to bless others? Because you are made in the image of God. God blessed them when he made them, and he put the same desire in you to bless others just like he did Adam and Eve. Um, Now, notice the declarative words he says here to Abram. He says, I will bless you. It's declarative. I will bless you. Because here's what's happening in your life. There's some of you that Satan works in your heart and mind, and you believe that you're cursed. We know Satan, you're not, but it's a lie from the enemy. But here's how it works. Here's how Satan works in your mind. He makes you believe, and the idea of a curse is that everything's going to fall apart. Everything's going to break down. Everything's going to fizzle out. Everything that you've worked on, it's going to fall apart. That's the essence of curse. But you've got to believe what the scripture here says. He says, I will bless you. It's declarative, and it's authoritative. I will bless you. I don't want you to miss that little part. The Holy Spirit just reminded me that this morning as I was just praying and thinking about it before I came here. I will bless you. Satan tells us these crazy lies. We're by ourselves. We're all alone. You're doomed. Whatever. Whatever lie he says. But you've got to know this. He says to to you, the same as he said to Abram, I will bless you. I will bless you. Um, God's heart is one of blessing. We see in our text in Numbers, he's declaring, and and the Lord says this, I'll bring part of this up in just a moment, but he says to Moses and Aaron, he says, and the Lord spoke to Moses saying, this is in the book of Numbers, and the Lord spoke to Moses saying, now here, here, the Lord spoke to Moses saying, speak to Aaron and his sons saying, this is the way you shall bless. Say to them, this is the way you should bless, number six. Verses uh, 22 to uh, 26. And here is the blessing, the Arianic blessing. And here's the nature of this way that God wants them to bless his people. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. That's the heart of the Lord for you. So look, three phrases stand out in my mind. The Lord keep you. 
in the midst of this pandemic, in the midst of the economic challenges, in the midst of the like, you know what the Lord says to all of us? He wants to bless us by saying that he's here. He's your keeper today. He is your keeper today. What does this also say in this phrase? It says that he's gracious to you. He's not mad at you. He's not here to beat you up. He's not here to curse you. He's not here to hurt you. He is here to bless you, and he's here to be gracious to you and to be kind to you. Show his mercy and love to you. And I love this last phrase of this this blessing. He says, I'm here to give you peace. Maybe your heart's rattled over everything that you're watching the news. Maybe your heart's rattled over what you're going through in your family. Maybe your heart's rattled with things that are personally going on in your own emotions. I want you to know that he's here to keep you, to be gracious to you, and to give you peace no matter what you are facing today. He's here to bless you with that today. That's his nature. That's his heart. Ah. So in this text, Genesis 12, 2, he says, I will bless you. Now, we can look at this and say, he said this, Pastor, he said this to Abram, what about us? But now look at down to verse 3. He says, notice he says this in in the next verse. He says in the last phrase, and in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. So it wasn't just to Abram. It was to all of us. He says, in you and through you all the families of the earth will be blessed. Because we got to ask this self, how does this transfer from Abram to all of us? That's a logical question. There's two things. If, If... To to really understand good truth, to understand what God's Holy Spirit is speaking for us today in our day in life, it's always good to have an Old Testament passage, and it's measured by a New Testament passage as well. Let me give you two. I'm going to reference them later, but I'll just give you the references right now, where Abraham and this, his, this essence of his blessing is to follow us into the New Testament. If you want to write these down, Acts 3, 24 to 26, and Romans 4, 16. I'm going to, I'm going to put those up on the screen in just a little while. But He carries this idea from Genesis chapter 12 into our lives now, today. This word, bless, it means an endowment of power of God's goodness. Can anybody use that right now? An endowment of power of God's goodness. In essence, when he told this to Abram, he said, uh, he says, I'm going to bless you. You're to be filled with the power of God's goodness that things might go well in your life, that he was going to succeed. If you, we look back on Abram's life, it became Abraham. Did, he, did things go well? Oh, he had hiccups, just like all the rest of us. But if you look at the measure of his life, did things go well with Abram? They sure did. And that's his intent for you as well. Um, it doesn't mean it means he, he desires our life go well it's not perfect the only place it's going to go perfect is when we're in heaven right we know that we're not going to have perfect life until we're in heaven he designed us that way so back in the last message series that I began back in the fall I was talking about I started the series on real faith that was out of this same text and I talked I just want to give some consequences because I expanded on this idea of blessing here in our text and I talked about uh, this idea of receiving and standing in God's blessing. I talked about our true identity and a faith that justifies, if you remember that message series. And we learned there that James, who was Jesus' half-brother, Joseph and Mary were his, J- James's parents who wrote the book of James to us. And he said of Abram, he said, Abram believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness and he was called God's friend. And if you remember, we were talking about this idea of God's blessing and I gave you three words that he says of you that we are blessed, we are righteous and we're God's friend. You're blessed, you're righteous and you're God's friend. Uh, to, to be blessed, he says, I'm going to bless you and I'm going to bless you with land, possessions and family. He said that to Abram. How many of you are glad you got a few possessions, you got a few things? Little land, maybe. Little few things that he's given to our lives. He's blessed. He said that I'm going to do that for Abram, and I'm going to do that for you. And we experience that. We, we live in that same blessing as well. And he says, you're righteous. You're justified. Things are right between you and God. And you can be, they can be, they're right for you and between God and yourself. Do you know that this morning? You can be right with God and right with yourself because of his righteousness that's in you. You're a beautiful people. You have, you're just, the demeanor of your heart is beautiful. You are righteous. You are the righteousness of God. You are justified 
before him. That's what that scripture is. And you're God's friend. You know you're God's friend today? You're not his enemy. He loves you. It's part of his blessing. And that's what he said of James said of Abram, and he, he said of us as well. He gives us inner peace. He gives us fulfillment. And you know what? When we sense that blessing in our life, you know what? When we sense that, we can really live. When, it, when we recognize that we're blessed of him, that's when you can really live and you can be free to touch, other li- touch others' lives and minister to others. So let's walk in that and live in that. And so, now, so let's say, Pastor, how does that carry then into our lives a little bit more? Can you explain that a little bit more? I said, yeah, sure. Mary, we just came out of Christmas. And uh, Mary, we think about Mary. And in Luke one twenty eight, the angel comes to Mary and says to her, um, says, rejoice, highly favored one. And what does he say? Blessed are you among women. Okay. And we know that we're in a Catholic community and, and there's some that really revere her in a higher way than, uh, than, uh, than maybe others. And so he says this, but now I'm going to say something here. Is it possible for you to be more, more blessed than Mary? What did that pastor just say? If I have scripture to prove it, would you believe me? You can be more blessed than Mary. Although he said, rejoice, highly favored one. You are blessed among women. I have proof. Here's a scripture. Luke chapter 11. And it happened as he spoke these things that a certain woman from the crowd raised her voice and said to him, this lady, she beams out her voice to Jesus in the crowd, blessed is the womb that bore you and the, and the breast which nursed you. This lady just blurts out in the crowd to Jesus and says these words. What does the next verse say? Look what Jesus said. But he said, more than that, more than Mary, more than Mary, Bless, more than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and what? Keep it. Oh, he's saying if we'll revere God's word and we'll keep God's word, he's saying that you can be more blessed than Mary. That's amazing. Now, I want to just talk to you for a moment about just the importance of God's word at the beginning of this year. I pray that you are people of God's word. I pray that it's not just that you're listening to me on Sunday mornings or you're listening to other your favorite preachers online or TV, but you yourself are picking up and reading God's word. You're not just receiving from other people, you're feeding yourself. You know, I, I don't know at what point and what, what day and age that we're going to be. I mean, what, what, what happened last Oh, whatever, in March, when all of a sudden we couldn't go to church. And let's say, let's just say the internet's kicked out, your cell service doesn't work, it happened in Nashville a couple of weeks ago when the bombing went off, that there, you know, I, I had friends in Nashville and their cell service got knocked out. We imagine, what, what are we going to do without cell service? What if church got knocked out for a year or two? Are you going to stand? The issue is, you know what, you need to be strong in God's word. One of the things that we're doing here at church, and, and we don't say a lot about it, but I'm going to say no more, and it, it's, a beginning, it's the beginning of the new year, it's important to say it. We do this thing called Chapter Up every week, and it's where we encourage you to read five chapters a day. We do it together. And so this week, we're on Luke chapter 16 to 20. And, uh, and just, it's, so you have other readings, other devotionals that you're using. Maybe as a couple, you're using some devotional. That's great. But I want to tell you, read God's word together. Sue and I just started doing this together. Uh, we sometimes have our own devotions or times together in, in God's word. But we've just started this week just opening up this and reading this, just one chapter together. Just chatting together for a few minutes. It takes 10 minutes. It doesn't take very long. But I'm telling you, you will grow as a person and you'll grow together if you'll just make God's word a part of your life on a regular basis. I want to encourage you to read a minimum of five chapters a week in in, in the Bible on your own. Feed yourself. Grow on your own. Live in God's word. Why? So because God wants to bless you. As you don't just read it, but you keep it and grow in his word. Live in his word. and, And you will be blessed as a result of it. As we go into 21, 2021, this pastor wants you to receive and stand in God's blessing as a pronouncement over your life in this new year. Now, i got to bring a caution up here. Carried too far, this can get out of hand, and it can blossom into a Christian uh, idea of self-exaggeration, if you will. 
and it's like this. It's God, bless me, bless me, bless me, bless me, and you don't think about anybody else. I gotta clear, I gotta clear this up right now. You understand? I, I, we're not talking about that. And, and that'll become clear in this message, but I gotta clear, because you, you, could, you could turn what I've just talked about into bless me, bless, and it's all about you. God never intended that. Our life is not to be consumed with self. I put some statements up here, the, the self-perception that we've got to get over and deal with. Problems of self-perception is we're consumed with what others think of me. Consumed with self-consciousness. Consumed with self-image. Consumed with self-projection. Consumed with self-protection. Consumed with selfish ambition. We can let stuff be, we can just let our lives be so self-centered. That's not God's blessing. That's not what I'm talking about we got to understand this. we got to live beyond ourselves. Let me just use another illustration. We have Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and all these things. Now, there's a lot of those aspects of those social media platforms that are good and people can connect together. And You can even send encouraging good message to other. There's other parts of it that they're suppressing stuff that they ought not to suppress and et cetera. There's some bad stuff of it as well. And, but, but here's the deal is, if you use Facebook, social media... To encourage somebody. To be, this, this message is being broadcast on Facebook right now, live. And uh, people will watch it over the week and over the month. And so it's a good thing. There's blessing. Good things can come through it. But here, here's, here, here's what a person can do and twist it. They can say, hmm, how many Twitter followers do I have? How many likes did I get? How many whatever followers do I have? And all that kind of thing. And you can turn it to all about you. What do people perceive of me on Facebook? And how many likes? And how many followers? And guess what that's about? That's about you. It's not about other people. So the idea I'm talking about is God's genuine blessing on our lives. Let's receive and let's stand in God's blessings. And when you do that, when you, stay, you realize that God's determinative is to bless you, when you understand that's his heart, you can turn and bless others. And let's turn our attention that direction to number two, be a blessing. So we want to receive and stand in God's blessing so that why we can be a blessing. <laughs> There's I was watching this week. Sue and I, about two or three years ago, went to, with our daughter, went to New York City on Thanksgiving, and we enjoyed the Thanksgiving Day Parade. And uh, all the balloons and all the people, when we stood down the street, we could hardly see the, I would have seen it better on TV if I wouldn't have done that. And, uh, but anyway, we got to enjoy it. And so this week, the Tournament of Roses Parade is supposed to be on. Oh, I turned it on. It was a virtual parade. Have you ever gone to a virtual parade? I tried to do it. It lasted 10 minutes this week. The tournament of roses, the smell of roses. You just, you, I mean, they, they, it was a joke. And they had people that were hoopling on these video screens and virtual screens and all this stuff. You can't have a parade that's meant for people virtually. It doesn't work. And... Uh, and so my parade experience this week was spoiled because it's meant for people to be a blessing to people. So uh, the truth is in our hearts because of the pandemic, what we've been through, the truth is we might be sick of serving ourselves this year. Um, let's take the sickness of being alone and be thrust to make our life a gift and a blessing to others. Let there be a shift out of what they wanted to be, us to be alone and all by ourselves. Let there be a shift in our heart to say, I am going to be a blessing to other people. Now, look at this in, in verse 3 here, or verse 2. He says, I'm going to bless you. And he says, and you shall be a blessing. You will be a blessing. It's declarative again. It's, it's his heart, it's his desire that you will be a blessing. It's something that you're, he's, he's directing of our lives, that we are a blessing. Now, what, you said, Pastor, what does this word blessing mean? It's up here on your screen, and look what it looks like. It's the word uh, in the Hebrew, baraka, and it means this. It means a gift, a benefit, generous, peace, or a present. 
to someone else. How do you view your life? How do you view your life? Um, can I just tell you, if you view your life in certain ways, if you view your life as my life is, I, I, I want to just tell you, there, there in, in, in my pastoral life, I deal with people's messes. One of the heart-wrenching things is in marriages when, and this, this is male or female, it doesn't matter, one spouse is just, they're consumed with their own life, their selfishness, what they want. It could be man or woman, it doesn't matter. It's heartbreaking to me. It doesn't make for good marriage, it doesn't make for good relationship. I pray that's none of you in this room. But so how do you view this? How, how do you take this idea of being a blessing? And how do you make an exchange? Here's what you need to do. If you're a spouse, or you're a person, you say, I'm going to be a gift, a present, a benefit to my spouse. I'm going to be a gift, a present, a benefit to my children. I'm going to be a gift, a benefit, or a present to a coworker. I'm going to be a gift or a present to my boss. I'm going to be a gift or present to my neighbor. I'm going to be a gift or present to my friend. I'm going to be a gift or present to my person that I go to church with. I'm going to be a gift or a present or a blessing, a benefit to my sister or my brother. I'm going to be a blessing, a, a gift, a present to my uncle or aunt or my grandma or grandpa or my teacher or my coach or you fill in the blank. If you view your life as that my life is to be a blessing, that I'm going to make my life a present, a gift to somebody else, you will, view the, you will change the view, the view of your interactions with other people. He says, I'm going to bless you that you will be a blessing. That's his heart. Maybe you have a troubled marriage, you have a troubled child, a troubled boss, a troubled coworker, a troubled friend. What if tomorrow morning, the first day of the work week that, or the, work, the first day of work for most of us this year, you're dealing with some troubled situation in your life, you go and you go into that situation and you say, you know what, I'm going to carry the gift of my life and I'm going to be a present to somebody else. I'm going to be peace to somebody else. I'm going to be generous to that person who's close to me. I'm going to be gracious to that person that is near me that's maybe troubled. How about your boss? Maybe your boss is really just agitated over something. Maybe he's just uptight or she's uptight. Why don't you go and just say, how can I be a blessing? How can I be a gift to that person? How can I lift them up? That's what this really means. I'm going to be a blessing to someone else. A secular person I, I was listening to this week, they didn't even realize it, and they said these words. They said, I just want to bring a smile to somebody's face. They, I, don't, I didn't sense anything in my spirit that they were even a Christian or a believer, but in doing that, they were acting out this word, another word in the o Old Testament called Asar, Ashar, and it really means to bless, and it means to bring happiness to somebody else. It's part of this idea of blessing. We know that carried into the Greek and the New Testament, it's makarios, means happy, joy, uh, uh, that sense of happiness. I'm going to put a smile, and you can hear a person say that. They are saying, I want to pronounce blessing over people's life, and they may not even be a believer, a Christian, know anything about Christ. It's the same idea. Now, there's a couple conflicts in your mind right now that you might be thinking about. And you might be saying, Pastor, I can't do that because I can't bless somebody in a big way. Can I tell you right now, blessing more often comes in little ways than big ways. Have you ever got a gift for Christmas or your birthday or I just had a birthday this week and, um, and somebody just gives you some little gift? And it meant so much. It sometimes meant, meant more than, or sometimes they said a few words in a card, and it meant more to you than some big thing that you got in life. The truth is you got it because there's some people that check out and say, Pastor, I can't bless somebody because I can't do it in a big way. That's a lie. 
The truth you've got to understand is that blessings more often come in little ways than big ways. Uh, I, I was thinking about this. I was thinking about somebody who I've watched bless families and children in big ways by little things. Jan Jacobson over here. She has touched more families and more children's lives than I can imagine. She has no idea I'm saying this right now. She didn't know I was going to tell her. Behind the scenes, we do our finance arts camp. When she was at celebration, she would make little, little things and little, little art pieces and little, little things that, uh, 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 costumes that would bless those kids and in turn bless the families and bless their grandkids that would come. And the truth be known is Jan's probably a little introverted, might be. She looks like, my face is, she's Italian crazy out here. But by herself, she'd just soon be by herself. But within her own personality, I have watched her in small ways bless hundreds of families, thousands of kids in so many ways because she works within her own personality to touch thousands of lives. Jan, bless you. And I've watched it. Some of you have been beneficiaries that are in this room because of it. <clears throat> it has to do with being faithful, what the scripture says, in small things. Attention to the small details of other people's lives. Sometimes we're all consumed in our grandeur and our self-driven pride of, I've got to do this big thing and this big thing. No, you know what? God just asks us to be faithful with the small things to bless others. Simple ways, not grand, grand ways. I, so as we continue this series, I, I'm going to tell you right now a little bit what I'm going to talk about the next few weeks. And they're going to be really simple. You say, Pastor, this is too simple. No, because I want to tell you, the truth is I'm going to be simple because some of us are really bad at these things. So here's what we're going to talk about in the next few weeks. We're going to talk about blessing somebody by just praying for them. Most of these will cost you nothing. Hmm. Just blessing somebody by just praying for them. I don't want to get into that sermon right now, okay? How about just becoming a good listener? I had somebody on the phone with me last night going through some trouble, yesterday going through some troubled times. And I said to them, and they're a part of this church. And I, I said, Tim, just if you need to call and blow off steam to me, just call. I'll listen. I won't say a word. I don't want to get into that sermon right now either. But I want to tell you the power of the blessing of just listening. Talk about the blessing about talking. Some people just need to be somebody to talk to them. That, that doesn't sound too complicated, does it? How about just helping somebody? Doesn't take a lot. We talk about being able to give to somebody. That's an easy way. Sometimes we, sometimes we use giving as just a scapegoat. Say, I gave to somebody, and, and the giving's nice, but it's just part of the process of blessing somebody. And sharing Jesus with people, being a witness. We'll talk about those simple things. Simple. But I want to tell you, Without your costing you a, a lot, you can bless so many people's lives. Let me say, in, in our years of pastoring and leading people, uh, one of the things we want to know is, how, God, how do I hear God's voice? God, I, I need direction in my life in this thing, and God, speak to me and show me the direction for this type of thing, or, or that way I should go, or this way I should go, that type of thing. And, and we ask for those big questions. Hear God's voice. And, and sometimes it's in giving. God, what should I give to this need, or this missionary, or give in church in an offering? We, that's a good way to learn how to hear God's voice. He speaks to your heart to give in this area. But here's one of the greatest ways that you can learn to bless somebody else is to learn to listen to the Lord. He will prompt you with somebody's life you're, you're to touch. I, I, was, I was driving down the street in our neighborhood and um, uh, 
we have some Hmong neighbors that are around the corner from us. It turned out to be uh, he is the, the pastor of the Hmong Assembly of God Church here in town. And, and uh, we've gotten to know them and their daughter got married and, and that type of thing. And, uh, and so we've become friends with them. And, and I felt prompted to, as I went by the other day, to say, I didn't text Ronnie and Z and say, uh, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. And I, I took up my phone yesterday and I, I quick texted them and I said, I said, Merry Christmas. Sorry, I, was, I, I missed you on Christmas and Happy New Year. And, and he said to me, he said, he said, Jerry, thanks for dear friend for reaching out. He said, Z was just diagnosed with coronavirus yesterday. And I said, hey, I said, let us know specifically how we can pray. You know what I'm saying? And, and so what, what my, my point being that is, is that I want to tell you one of the ways for you to listen to God's voice to be a blessing, is he's going to put somebody's name in your head. Maybe it's just a, tweet, a little text. Maybe it's a phone call. Maybe it's a little card. I want to tell you one of the ways that you can hear God's voice is he, and you need to, you, okay, every name that comes by our mind, we, we would just be frack. Like this, blah, 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 blah. No, the ones that he's, he, he brings to your attention and he brings back to your attention, he, now, respond to that. That's the Lord speaking to you, that they, they are maybe praying, you're an answer to somebody else's prayer, and he wants you to be a blessing to somebody else. It's one of the great ways to learn to hear God's voice. You want to hear God's voice in the big things? No, learn to hear God's voice in the little promptings that he's giving to you. Another area, so the first one is, God, I, can, I, I can't give because I, I can't be a blessing because I can only do it in the big ways. Here's another one. It might be a conflict in your mind. Pastor, does blessing others mean that I never confront problems? Huh, pastor, if I'm supposed to be good to everybody and I'm supposed to be kind to everybody and I'm supposed to show this graciousness to everybody, do, do I... Do I not confront problems? Let me use Jesus as an example of, of this one. Do you know that Jesus blessed us by his sacrificing himself, dying on the cross, taking on the darkness, the crucifixion? And the scripture says that he actually blessed us all because he did that. It says in Acts chapter 3, Verses 24, 25, 26. I'll just read verses 25 and 26. I don't know where we're at in that. Oh, here, here we go. You are the sons of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers saying to Abraham, and in your seed, all the what? This is New Testament now. In you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed, right? I never saw this connection between these two verses. Look at the next verse. To you first, God having raised up his servant Jesus, sent him to what? to bless you in turning you away, every one of you away from your iniquities. Can I tell you, when Jesus sacrificed himself, he died on that cross, what did he do? He blessed us by turning us away from our sin and our iniquity. Can anybody say amen? amen. He blessed us. He sacrificed. He faced darkness, torment, and hell in order to bless us. Our American soldiers have sacrificed, faced darkness, torment in order to bless us so that we can have freedom. The hours at hand where we as Christians may have to sacrifice, face darkness and torment to bless our fellow Americans. I, 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 sometimes I'm, I'm going to say a few things now and I don't prefer to say them, but they need to be said. And I, there, in, in the way of election, that type of thing, the way, what's going on in our country right now, can I tell you, there are more Christians praying than I have ever seen at election time. There, I, 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 I mean, churches, ministries, I mean, I have never seen so much praying going on. And we can, we can be assured if we're praying like that, God is going to see us through. Okay, you can be, be assured of that. I have never seen so many people in their 20s and 30s engaged in politics. Man, when I was in my 20s, I could give a rip. I was busy with my life, and I, but now the kids in their 20s and their 30s, and they're engaged, and they know all the things, and there's a lot of division and all kinds of crazy stuff. And there's some of you who say, Pastor, I'm flat out weary of everything. It's not always a time to be weary. There's a time that we have to rise up, and we have to say what we need to say, and we have to confront things. That, and he said, Pastor, well, we're not big. We're not big. But you know what? Gideon was not big either. Gideon's army was not big either. 
And there's sometimes we got to just say some things. And God used a small band of, of Gideon and his, his troops to make a difference. And I want you to notice something in our politics. That after the election happened, there's no Republicans that are burning down buildings because they didn't get their way. They're decent people. And there's a bunch of Democrats that are decent people too. But in, in my, my simple judgment... There's part of this contesting of the election that was maybe missed. And, um, and so I don't know that it's all settled. It still may stir up this week, and, and uh, there may be a shaking. I don't know. I, I just saw in the news yesterday that 12 senators, unheard of, are going to contest this election uh, in this week on Wednesday, uh, which is the right decision. But I think they've taken a little bit of a wrong approach. And I'll, I'll t not, not these guys this week, but in the, in the previous weeks leading up to this. And I'll tell you what it is. Attorney John um, Eastman, he said that of the UN in the United Nations, that uh, at the United Nations, that the United Nations, this body, they consider an election not valid if poll watchers are taken out of the way and not allowed to watch. The UN, that's their standard. And we had several that in the, they were, people were held in corrals, cor, cor, coral, corrals. They were corralled people into the corrals and, and it made them watch from 100 feet away where they couldn't see anything. And they were put, went, put, they boarded up windows, they wouldn't let them uh, observe things, and they kicked them out and clapped as they were kicking out observers. Happened in Michigan, happened in Pennsylvania, I think Virginia, Georgia, all, a bunch of states. And it happened all over the place. So, in my view, counties who kicked out legitimate poll workers, kept them in corrals, blocked off windows, counted after watchers left, uh, left when both uh, par uh, left from both parties, they should revote. See, they were trying to just just undo a whole bunch of votes, and that then you're going to take out some people who voted correctly. They should have made those counties all revote that that handled it that way. That would have been, and then let let watchers in on both sides. Now I don't know if we can pull that off in the next few days or not, but that's really what should have happened in in my view. So. And, and I know they use this coronavirus. Well, you know what? You can put surgeon's gowns on to poll watchers and let them watch. You can put scuba gear on with masks and tanks on and let them watch the cotton-picking elections. <laughs> so they use the coronavirus. But anyway, we, we need to pray for our country right now. We're at a real crossroads. You as Christians are, might have to... It, it causes a little confrontation. It causes a little difficulty. But the issue is, we all want to be blessed, and you might have to sacrifice. You might have to save some things that are uncomfortable, and, and we can say them in gracious ways. I don't think I've been obnoxious by what I'm saying right now, just causing us to think a little bit. We can be gracious, but yet we can, because the idea is that, you know, we want, our, we want nations to be, I want you to be, as people, to be blessed. And so we need to say something. We need to get on the phone with some of these, even Democratic Congress people, and say, uh, now, and I'll tell you what's at stake, and I'll tell you why. You know, even with coronavirus, do you know the odds of those 50 years and age or older, the odds of you living, even if you get it, are 99.8%? Uh, over 70, it's 95% that you're going to get through it and get over it. And uh, so, it, 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 at a rate, in my age, I'm, I'm over 50, at 99.8% of, of risk of losing life, I can't stop living at that risk level. So what's at stake? Here's what's at stake, decency or delusion. Here, I'll just read a news report that came out yesterday. National news. New House rules unveiled, this is going to be, happen tomorrow, okay, about noon. New House rules unveiled by House Speaker Nancy Pelosi are completely gender neutral. The House's 45-page rules package that will be voted on Monday after the new Congress commences would also continue proxy voting during the coronavirus pandemic. Now listen to this, ban lawmakers convicted of certain crimes from visiting the House floor again. I'll tell you what that means. That's aimed at you as Christians. That's aimed if you are stand for Israel and they'll call you a racist and say you can't speak on the House floor, even Congress people can. If you're a Christian, you stand up for certain biblical values, they're going to make it a crime that you can't, that 
lawmakers can't speak on the floor because they're going to rule them of co committing a, a crime of hatred and racism. It's terrible. You think it's not true? It's already happened in England, in London. And change payment rules on legislation related to the virus and climate change that pre previously required lawmakers. In other words, the idea of climate change is that God is not strong enough to take care of the environment. Then they, these people, these people don't believe in God. And that and we've got to be careful with our environment. I mean, uh, I go boating and I don't throw stuff in the water. Okay, we just got to be reasonable about stuff. But the, the message of climate change is God that somehow you have lost control. God, you can't handle it. I get it. We're God. We got to take care of it because God, you really can't do it. It's really an assault on God. <clears throat> change payment, change payment rules on legislation related to the virus and climate change that previously required lawmakers to identify rev uh, to new revenues sources of spending cuts to fund their priorities, in an effort to be inclusive to those who don't identify as a specific gender. The rules package, this is tomorrow, in the U.S. House of Representatives, in an effort to be inclusive to all those who don't, don't identify as a specific gender, the rules package strips all mention of gender-specific pronouns in terms such as man, woman, mother, or son. There's nothing in the rules that prohibit members from using gender-specific forms when speaking on the House floor or conducting business. Can I tell you what? That's nuts. That's delusion. And that's stuff that we have to speak up and say, we don't want. That, this is the United States House of Representatives. There's men and women that need to be identified as so, and to say that, well, the Speaker of the House, is uh, the it up there is going to speak. That's lunacy. That's ridiculous. And there's a time that we've got to stand up, and, and, and so, you know, you need, you need to, we need to get a hold of Democratic Congress people and senators and say, don't pass this stuff as well as our, and Ron Johnson, we have an incredible senator in the state here who he's standing up against this election and everything else is crazy. Um, but th my, my point being is, you say, Pastor, does blessing sometimes include confrontation? It does. You're in a relationship, you're in a you're in work situation, things have to be talked about. And by, th there's times as pastor in this church, a little history of this church, is that uh, there's a time or two that myself and our leadership team, we've had to take a couple of hits behind the scene. We've done it discreetly, but we've had to deal with a couple problems, and we did it not because we are against anybody, but we had to do it to bless you so you're safe. There's sometimes you have to bless. So you have to take care of situations and deal with situations, and so we got to deal with that in our own hearts and our minds. So in the days that we're entering, God needs you to be a blessing to others more than ever before. So we need to be, we need, it says, the scripture says, to be a blessing to those of the household of faith. Be a blessing to your family. Be a blessing to your neighbors. Be a blessing to your work associates. And here's what i got to tell some of you to do. Some of you are doing good blessing your family. You've got to move beyond your family. You've got to reach out beyond your family. And you've got to bless others. And I want to tell you this. No matter the chaos in our nation, our country, God wants us to bless others, even if things turn chaotic. Now, I'm going to, I'm going to be done. Is this. I, I, was, I, I just want to end with this last illustration in scripture and I, I was laying in bed this week and and uh, just praying over this message this thoughts and it was the idea of the veil and I don't have the time to develop the idea of the veil from the scripture but um, in this um, it says in Romans 4 16 it says those who are of the faith of Abraham who is the father of us all now I, I've, done a lot, I've conducted a lot of weddings. Pastor Arnie's conducted a lot of weddings. There's, there's, a, there's a special moment in weddings. And not all, not all brides wear a veil anymore, but some of them do. And um, as, as the wedding comes in and, and the bride comes down the aisle with her father in his arms, carrying her down the aisle in their locked arms, and they come and stand before me, and, and they are ready to be married, there's something the father does. He lifts that veil over the top of the bride and allows the glow of the face of the bride to be seen by her husband. It's a beautiful moment. The splendor, the beauty of that bride is so gorgeous. And 
uh, is, is we, we think about that, that scenario and that, that, that place or that position. I, I was thinking about you being the body of Christ. And could you imagine if that bride came down there and there was no husband to meet there? She would be serving herself if she just lifted the husband, father lifted the veil and there was no one to be a blessing to, it would be of naught. But that father lifts that veil so she can be a blessing to her husband and vice versa. And I was thinking about this whole concept of you being the body of Christ. I look at you, how beautiful you are, how radiant your face is, how righteous, how wonderful all of you are. And if I, this morning, could be like that Father Abraham, and I could just lift the veil off of your face so that as you walk out these doors, you can be a blessing in this community. You can be a blessing to your neighbors. You can be a blessing to the family, your family. You can be a, I just, I pray, just lift the veil off so that the radiance of the righteousness and, and the, the beauty of who you are, the bride of Christ, can be the blessing that you were meant to be. That's my heart this morning. So as Abraham came to that altar, with these two ideas in mind. He says, I'm going to stand and receive God's blessing. And I'm determined at that altar to be a blessing to other people. Let's stand together this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, this morning, We make this room an altar. And Lord, I pray today we be reminded that we are standing in your blessing. We receive your blessing. And we're standing in it. So Lord, you said, I will bless you. Lord, we receive it today. We stand in it. But Lord, not just for us, but Lord, at this altar, may we recognize that we want to be a blessing to other people. Lord, turn our hearts to others. Lord, lift the veil from our faces, from the radiance, from the beauty, the righteousness of this wonderful people. And God, may we go out of these doors. May those that are listening online go from their homes and say, I determine in my life that I am going to be a blessing to other people in simple ways, in small ways, even big ways. God, let that be our heart as we go into the new year. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you the praise and we give you the glory. And everybody said a great big? Amen. Amen. So my challenge to you, can can we all say these words together? I'm going to be a blessing. I'm going to be a blessing. Say them together. I'm going to be a blessing. Say it one more time. I'm going to be a blessing. Let's go out. That's our marching orders for this new year. 